Hello and welcome to the next tutorial by Prepomics. This time I will show you how to perform a stress analysis of spur gears. So you know, let's create a new model first and I will import the geometry and uh, let's just wait a second. Okay, the geometry is imported. So um, now you can see that we have two gears, uh, but there are also two separated regions. Um, and uh, the reason why I created them is because um, basically I need uh, to have a transition between a very coarse uh, first order mesh here and here and um, <clears throat> dense uh, second order mesh in the region of interest. So that's why I have those two um, regions. Uh, maybe let me show you how I modeled those gears. I created them in FreeCAD and I didn't have to model them manually because uh, I can either use the uh, gear creation, gear profile actually um, creation tool in part design and then extrude it, or I can use the <clears throat> dedicated add-on workbench called uh, gear and then I have mm, different types of gears that I can generate with different parameters and then I can even assemble them. So that's a really nice mm, workbench, uh, add-on workbench in FreeCAD. That's what I did to, to create those uh, gears. Okay, let's go back to mm, Prepomex and now I will define the mesh settings. So let's create a meshing parameters item. I will apply it to the first region here and uh, I will leave the default settings for max element size and I will just change the number of elements per edge and curvature. Uh, I, want to, I want to reduce it and also disable second order because this is the region of the coarse mesh and I will do the same uh, for this region right here. So also leave the default element size but change the um, elements per edge and uh, disable second order. Now um, I will select uh, those regions that are supposed to be more refined. So then um, I will specify the maximum element size of 0.4 millimeters and I will leave the, left, the rest with the default settings. So two elements per edge and curvature and second order. Now um, let me do the same for, for this second region. So also in the same max element size and the, the rest with the default settings. Okay, now I have the meshing parameters applied and I can uh, define the extrude mesh uh, object for, for each region. I have to do it separately for all the four regions. So let's select the first one and I need to enable recombination. This way I will obtain uh, hexahedral and wedge elements instead of tetrahedrons. And uh, I will need to also select the number of elements which will be one in the thickness direction. Uh, I, will use the, I will use just a single layer of elements in this direction because this is basically something like plain stress in, in 3D. So that's, that's why I'm using just a single layer of, of elements. So this is for, for the first region. Then I will do the same for this region. So also a single layer of elements and recombination. And then mm, I'll do the same for this region and the same settings also for and the last region here. And uh, let's uh, just confirm. And now I can uh, create the mesh, but there's just one more thing that, that I want to do. Um, I want to create mesh refinement and apply it to this edge right here. Uh, so this will be my region of interest. Um, and I just need to specify the element size, which will be much smaller than, than for, for the rest of, of the mesh. So um, this is my refinement region. And now I can create the mesh. Okay, the mesh is created. As you can see, we have very coarse mesh here and dense mesh here, also with the mesh refinement. So this is exactly what I wanted to achieve. Let me just hide the mesh uh, since we won't need it for now. Okay, let me define material. Uh, I'll create a standard material. Uh, like in most tutorials, this will be just steel with standard uh, parameters and um, yeah, and Young's modules and, and Poisson's ratio. And uh, then I'll create a section. I will apply it to uh, all those four regions. And now um, I'm just left with uh, the rest of the of the setup, which is mainly constraints and, and steps. Uh, so let's create the reference points first. Um, I will use the uh, following uh, coordinates uh, for the reference points. Uh, of course, I want them to be located um, in uh, in the in the middle of each hub. So I want one here and also one for for the other. Uh, for the other gear. Uh, so this is the location of the second uh, reference point. And as you can see there in the middle where I want them to, to be located. So now let's create uh, rigid body constraints. And this one will use this uh, surface and then the other one uh, will use this reference point and this mm, surface. Okay, so now we have the rigid body constraints ready. And now I'm left with the remaining constraints and mm, then later I will proceed to step setup. Uh, but uh, let's complete the constraints first. Mm, 
you can, as you can see, uh, we have those two separate regions. They are disconnected, so so I need to make sure they are attached to the rest of the mesh, and I can use tie constraints for that. Uh, instead of defining them manually, I can just use search contact pairs, uh, select uh, mesh adjustment, and then mm, search. And this will show me uh, this one and this one, and I can remove the other two. Uh, since I don't need them, I will only leave those uh, two tie constraints. And now I just want to make sure that they have proper master-slave uh, surface assignment, so let me hide those parts, and I will check the, the constraints. This one is, is the, the way I want this to be, and uh, the second one requires uh, swapping the, the master-slave assignment. So mm, this is the, the right definition. I can go to and check this. Uh, the adjustment is, is enabled, uh, and then this is the, the master region, so this is exactly what I want here. Okay, so let me bring back the visibility of, of all parts. And now, um, of course, I also need to define uh, contact. So let's create a surface interaction first. This will be a default surface behavior heart, and then contact pair. I could also use the search contact pairs tool, uh, but in this case, I will just define it manually. I will disable adjustment, and let's um, select the faces for, for the master side first. So um, I will just uh, select all the faces that may come into contact. It's important to make sure that all the uh, surface pairs that, that can contact in, during the analysis are uh, selected because if they are not assigned to the um, contact pair then basically they won't see each other so this is really uh, really crucial to um, to select all the uh, necessary uh, surfaces okay so this is one side and then i'll proceed to the other side uh, i can go from here and then i just need to make sure those uh, tiny uh, surfaces here are also selected i need to take care of them too and then also this one and i'll proceed uh, until uh, up to this uh, phase right here okay so now i have i, I can also mm, take a quick look at, at the definition make sure that everything is properly defined i think that this is all correct here so uh, let me confirm this all right now we have the um, contact defined so uh, let's just proceed to step setup i will use a static step mm, and just uh, change the enable the geometric linearity this is especially important for la large rotations. Mm, and let's just um, select the initial increment size, which will be 0 0.1 seconds. And then mm, I will leave the rest with defaults mm, and let me just uh, create boundary conditions. So mm, the first one will be fixed uh, for, for this gear. Uh, so I'll select the reference point. And then the other one will be displacement rotation boundary condition for uh, the other reference point. And in this case, I will fix all the degrees of freedom apart from, from the last one. So I will leave this one uh, not, under, uh, not um, unconstrained, uh, but uh, I will just uh, specify the prescribed um, value of, of rotation here. Mm, so let me enter the, the right value. Uh, this will be uh, in uh, radians, a really small um, angle of rotation. Uh, Minus is because I want to ensure proper direction of rotation. And now let's accept this. Let me explain why I use prescribed rotation. I could use torque here, so I could just go to moment, select the reference point, and then specify the, the moment in, in, in this field. But this could mean basically convergence issues because we have contact here and there will be initial rigid body motions. So mm, this would cause uh, contact issues, uh, convergence issues, and that's why I'm using uh, prescribed rotation instead. Uh, another workaround could be to um, just uh, apply a spring, a very soft spring. Uh, there are no um, rotational or um, torsional springs in Calculix, at least not directly available. So I would, would have to apply it somewhere else, like, like here, uh, a translational spring, a very soft one, and just to, to resist um, the rotation enough to, to avoid the rigid body motion, but uh, not too uh, stiff to uh, cause uh, differences in results. Uh, so that, that would be one way, but um, in this case I'm just applying uh, the rotation angle here, and I will read the um, torque from, from the reference point. So let's also create uh, node output and select the reaction force and then the reference point here. I don't need totals because this is just a single node anyway, so so I can, or actually two nodes because this is ref node and the rot node in Calculix, but this is just one for, is for forces and the other one is for moments, so this, this doesn't really matter. Um, I think that everything is defined now, uh, so uh, let me just uh, submit analysis and uh, let's wait for the results. 
Okay, the results are available now, so let's open them. And I will switch to true scale. And now mm, let's uh, check the uh, history output. So I want to know the uh, torque, uh, the, the reaction moment in, in the third axis. So uh, let's copy this value. And now I will go to my calcpad sheet and uh, I will paste the uh, value right here. Uh, I just need to get rid of, of the unnecessary part. And now mm, I can uh, proceed to, uh, to, to, to obtain the undeco results. Uh, but uh, let me just uh, switch to stresses first in prepomex, and uh, we are interested in stresses in this region, uh, not those because those are just the contact stresses. Um, but uh, we have the refined mesh here, so this is the, our region of interest. And uh, let's just um, go back to to the calcpad sheet. Um, this is uh, the, the formula that I'm using here is just um, simplified uh, Lewis formula, um, the, the one that is really common in gear design. Uh, but the original formula is. Um, basically meant uh, for, for gear design and not for solidary comparisons. It has that additional co coefficient uh, that doesn't really fit here, so uh, this is mm, the simplified version, just, just basically bending uh, equation for, for beam because we are treating the uh, tooth as, as a beam and uh, this is the, the simplified equation that uh, can be used to, to um, check the um, stresses in, in, this, uh, in this beam. And this is the, the base of the, the Lewis formula. So now that we have the value, we can go back to um, prepomex and we can use the query tool to uh, check the, uh, the values in, in different locations. Uh, let's also uh, check the directional stress. And uh, as you can see, the accuracy here is not uh, perfect. Uh, it could be better. We could uh, try um, refining the mesh a bit. Uh, maybe even more, a bit more here, uh, but I would say that the agreement is still mm, pretty good when, when compared with this uh, hand calculation. So mm, let's uh, let's stay with this mm, with this result, and and I would say that uh, we confirmed the uh, the results with, with the hand calculations. All right, mm, uh, that's it for this prepomex tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. As always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.